Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the symptoms associated with a low TSH. Now, the TSH, as you probably already know, is a, a test called thyroid stimulating hormone, and it helps you determine what's going on in your thyroid. But what you have to realize is it is not a perfect test. Okay, and so when we're evaluating somebody who has a low TSH, you need to ask yourself a couple questions. Number one, are you taking thyroid medication? And number two, how do you feel? Okay, so we'll start with this. So let's bring out the whiteboard to help you sort of understand what I'm talking about here. Because again, it's not probably as straightforward as you think it is. So we're starting up here with a low TSH. So you'll probably see just the top of that. And you have to ask yourself, are you taking thyroid medication? If you are taking thyroid medication, we have to evaluate you in a completely different way. If you're not taking thyroid medication, then again, you probably have a completely different problem. So let's first start with those people who are taking thyroid medication. Now again, you're only gonna be taking thyroid medication if you have a condition such as hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or if your thyroid has been destroyed by radioactive iodine, or um, if it's been removed surgically with a thyroidectomy. Okay, so the question is, you have a low TSH and you're experiencing some symptoms, but what type of symptoms are you experiencing? Are you have a low TSH, are you feeling hypothyroid or are you feeling hyperthyroid? And this is a big question. So I have the, the different symptoms kind of um, put on the left and the right here, and we'll talk about them in just a second. But the reason I care a lot about whether or not you're feeling hypo or hyperthyroid is because of this. It is very possible for you to have a low TSH, okay, and still be hypothyroidism or still be in a hypothyroid state. Now, many people, they, they try to diagnose hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism based off of this TSH alone. In fact, many doctors do this. But as, as I'll point out in just a second, it's very possible for you to have a low TSH and still be hypothyroid. In fact, I believe that most people who are taking thyroid medication, remember, we're talking about those people who are taking thyroid medication, if they have a low TSH are still hypothyroid. And the reason for that is simple. We can give you a ton of thy uh, thyroid medication, like levothyroxine or Synthroid. I can give you a T4 medication, let's say 200 micrograms. I can drive that TSH down, but if your body isn't converting that T4 and activating that thyroid medication I'm giving you, well, it's gonna drop the TSH because your pituitary is sensitive to it, but it's not actually getting in your cells, okay? And so this is where the symptoms become so important. So uh, again, where you have a low TSH, you're on thyroid medication, you're asking yourself, do I feel hypo or hyper? If you have these symptoms and you're taking medication, it's likely that it's a problem with your medication. So these are the symptoms you can be having if the medication that you're currently taking is not working it, the way it should be, okay? So you might experience low energy. You might have weight gain. So gain is very important here. That helps differentiate hypothyroid from hyper. You might have cold intolerance. So if the air conditioning is on and it blows on you, you can't tolerate that cold, okay? You might have a decrease in your heart rate. Again, very important, a drop in the heart rate. So people with hypothyroidism tend to have a heart rate somewhere between the, um, the range of 50 to 70, maybe even in the low 50 range, okay? Whereas normal when you're up and awake is somewhere between 70 and 90. So this would be normal. And then obviously it goes a lot higher if you exercise. So you're gonna have a low body temperature as well. You might be experiencing hair loss or your hair that's falling off of your head. And then of course you might have depression. So if you have a low TSH, you're taking thyroid medications, but you're experiencing all of these symptoms, then that's an indication that you are hypothyroid still. Okay, I know this might be a confusing um, concept for many of you because you're so used to looking at the TSH, but you can absolutely be, your cells can be deficient in thyroid hormone even though your TSH is low. Now on the flip side, it is also possible, and this is where I get a little confusing, it is also possible if you're taking medications and you have a low TSH to be hyperthyroid. But again, I think this is fairly rare unless you're using a medication which contains T3 thyroid hormone, okay? So that would include medications like natural desiccated thyroid, armor thyroid, NP thyroid, etc. Also, the other medications that can do this would be Cytomel or Lyothyronine. Those are T3 only thyroid medications. Now, those medications are much more potent than the standard levothyroxine and Synthroid medications that most doctors prescribe. So if you're taking a T4 only medication and your TSH is low, the chances of you having hypothyroidism is very high. But if you're taking something with T3, then the chances of having these hyperthyroid symptoms is a lot more likely, okay? And so it's not always guaranteed, by the way, but it is more likely. So if you fit into that category, then the symptoms you would, you'd have to look at yourself and say, how do I feel? And if you were having fatigue, again, low energy and fatigue are on both. So this can be kind of confusing. But one of the key differentiators is weight loss. So if you have that low TSH and you're losing weight and you're on thyroid medication, 
it's a sign that your medication is probably too high or it needs to be tweaked a little bit. You might be experiencing heart palpitations. So your, beat, so your heart is uh, pounding out of your chest and you feel it, you, you feel that sensation. You might have a rise in your heart rate. So people in this category may have a heart rate greater than 90 in the rested state. Remember, whereas if you had hypothyroidism, your heart rate was in the 50 to 70 range. Okay, you might have hair loss. And again, you'll see hair loss is on both sides here. But the hair loss here tends to be uh, dry and, and brittle hair and your hair is breaking. Okay, whereas hair, hair loss on the hypothyroid side tends to be your hair is just straight up falling out of your head. Okay, yes, you do lose your hair, but it breaks and it kind of crumbles a little bit. So it's a different type of hair loss, but hair loss is on both sides. Instead of having depression, you tend to have anxiety. So you can kind of get the idea here that the symptoms between these two are basically opposites with some, some overlap here. So you have anxiety as opposed to depression, although you can be depressed too in the hyperthyroid state. You'll have tremors, so your hands will be shaking a little bit like this, okay? Um, and that just comes out of nowhere, whether when you haven't had it otherwise. And then the last one is heat intolerance. So you can't see this one down here, but just trust me, it's here. So as on the other side, remember I said, if the air conditioning blows on you, you may be feeling like you can't tolerate that, right? And, and because you have cold intolerance, which is a simple symptom of hypothyroidism, but a symptom of hyperthyroidism is heat intolerance. So if a heater blows on you or if you go outside, you know, you open the oven and it blasts you in the face, it's like you ju your body just can't tolerate that. It doesn't know what to do because it's having problems regulating your own body temperature. So again, let's go back just so we can kind of clear this up a little bit. If you are taking thyroid medication and, and you're feeling the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, then, that may, then you'll fit into this category down here. And that's an indication you probably need to adjust your dose. Probably you need to low, ease up on the dose a little bit. But on the flip side, you can be taking thyroid medication, experience hypothyroid symptoms, um, have the low TSH, and it means you might need a different type of thyroid medication or even more medication. Generally, it's not more. Generally, you just need to adjust the T4 to T3 ratio you're currently taking. Okay, so that was just down the side of yes, taking medications or no, not taking medications. And the reason I spent a lot of time on this is because so many people fit into this category, they just don't understand their symptoms. So I'm trying to help you understand how you should be evaluating yourself if you have a low TSH in the setting of taking thyroid medications. But it's different depending on which type of medication you're taking and the dose that you're taking. Okay, but what about if you're not taking any thyroid medication? What if you just have a low TSH, you're not on any meds, um, and you're, you're having some symptoms? So what are the symptoms you would feel here? Now, this is actually much easier than the case I, I brought up earlier, which is why I'm talking about this one, uh, which is why I talked about that one first and this one second. So if you fit into that category, low TSH, no medication, you're almost always going to have these symptoms. Very rarely do you not have these symptoms. It's going to be one of two things. You're either going to be feeling fine, okay, you're not going to have any symptoms, or you're going to feel all of these hyperthyroid symptoms. So like I said before, you'll be fatigued. You'll have unexplained weight loss without trying. You'll have those heart palpitations I talked about. You'll have an increase in your heart rate, an increase in your body temperature, anxiety, tremors, and then the heat intolerance. So that is a sign of hyperthyroidism caused by your own body. Okay. Now you can go into a hyperthyroid state with the use of medications, but if you're not on medications, that's an indication your body is doing it on its own. Okay, and then the other, the other thing that can happen is you have this low TSH and you're like, well, I, I feel kind of good, right? Like, I, I don't, there's nothing really wrong with me. If that's the case, don't do anything. Just recheck your TSH in about two months, okay? So if that's the case, no symptoms. So if, you, so if you're not on thyroid medication, you have no symptoms, recheck your TSH in about two months and just keep an eye on it. You might want to also check your um, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, um, which is a, a test to check for Graves' disease. But this is... But again, just to recap here, if you have a low TSH, you're not on medications and you're, you're asymptomatic, recheck in two or three months. If you are symptomatic, you want to check these TSI antibodies to see if you have a condition known as hyperthyroidism. And so these are the symptoms associated with a low TSH. But remember, they vary depending on the cause of that low TSH. So I want to hear from you below. If you have a low TSH, first of all, tell me what your number is. I'm very interested. How low is your TSH? Because I see a lot of people who will say, oh, I have a really low TSH. And then I look at it, I'm like, well, that's not actually a really low TSH. A really low TSH is usually described as something that's less than 0.001 or less than 0.005. That's a, that's a suppressed really low TSH. But if your TSH is just like 0.3 or 0.4, it may not be anything to worry about. So leave, leave the number that you have below. Um, if you have any questions regarding your TSH or your case, go ahead and leave a little information about that and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, and by the way, if you like this type of information, um, if you like learning about the thyroid, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell because I, I talk a lot about the thyroid and I think a lot of it will be helpful for, for you. So that's all I got for you today and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.